Hello there, my name is Aaron. I'll be your host for about the next 10, 15 minutes or so. Welcome to my home. I'm very pleased and honored to have you here. Uh, today I'm going to be busting the mold a little bit. Uh, I'm going to kind of like rub up against the grain to what I normally do. I normally do product review videos and uh, subsequently I've done one in regards to vaping health and vaping safety. Uh, for a list of my videos, you can go to my YouTube account, Aaron Grace, one that you're watching right now. Look for a playlist called Vaporosity. They're all in there. Uh, if you could give any which one a look, maybe a little comment, a little whatever, be very, very appreciated. But back to what we're doing here. Um, I thought I'd break the mold a little bit, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to build a coil. And uh, basically, this coil build, just going to do one of them. Uh, this coil build is for the very, 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 very entry level person. This is for the person similar to how I was a little over five months ago, sitting there at a kitchen table with, you know, the, the five pack of Kanger micro coils that I bought for my Pro Tanks uh, that are spent. The, the silica is all bleh and it's all dry, dirty hits and they're spent. That's $11.99 in the toilet. And you're sitting there and you're wondering, you know, I only got like, you know, maybe a couple bucks in the wallet. I can't go buy new Kanger coils, you know, eleven ninety nine plus whatever state you're in tax, you know, county tax, city tax, whatever it might be. So this video is designed to help the person that might want to bu uh, bust into the build scene. This is for you. Guy or gal, doesn't make any difference. You got your spent coils, don't know what to do with them, came to YouTube found a person like me and there's hundreds of other people like me out there that are going to say roughly the same things, do roughly the same things, uh, and it all equals the same end result. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is uh, show you how to build a coil for an entry level device uh, similar to like an iTaste VB2, BAMO V5, those type of entry level mod devices. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it out in regards to kind of like a grocery list uh, of what you're going to need. I'll show you that here in a minute. But before I do that, we are going to talk for roughly about a minute about vaping health and vaping safety. I'm kind of coining some of what I did on my previous video, but in case you don't watch that one, don't even know about that one, um, you're going to want to do your building and you're going to want to put together your materials or supply and you're going to wonder what you're going to need to use. I'm going to let you know right off the bat if you're going to rebuild and rewick a stock Kanger head or Kanger coil for your Pro Tank 2, Pro Tank 3 Mini, whatnot, do not go to your medicine cabinet right now and look, oh, I just need cotton, you know, no, 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 no. Do not use what you would find the similar product in your medicine cabinet, in your bathroom or whatnot. Do not use anything with the word hypoallergenic in it. Do not use Q-tip cotton for your wee wicking purposes with any build you ever do on any coil, any deck, any vape tank, whatever. You do not use this. If you watched my previous video, you learned I had a real severe medical situation happen at the hands of hypoallergenic cotton. Took a after hours nurse's hotline. It took uh, about three or four Benadryl. It took uh, drinking milk. Uh, and uh, had a very bad allergic reaction to this product. And I've heard since then, like a particular good friend of mine on social media, he reported to me he had the same type of consequences when he used hypoallergenic cotton. So first and foremost, we do not use this. No. What you should be looking for in your medicine cabinet, and if you do happen to have some laying around, bonus, man. Absolute bonus. What you want is stuff like the Walgreens organic cotton. Keyword, Q-tips, hypoallergenic, no, no. Allergic reactions possible, lots of Benadryl, lots of milk, medical nurses after our hotline. You don't want that. This will keep you vaping in awesome flavor, awesome vapor, but more importantly than the awesomeness, it'll keep you safe and it'll keep you healthy. So what you want, go in your medicine cabinet, 
look for organic. The key word to the cotton products that you're going to use is the word organic. And if you don't have it, if you don't have anything organic and it's all hypoallergenic cotton balls, hypoallergenic Q-tips, do not use it. I know you got your spent coils down there, they're staring you in the face. You got your tank, you got your juice, you want to vape, you're nicking a little bit. You got to fight that temptation to want to throw the hypo in there. What you should do is, you know, muster all the money you can. If you got a five, six, you know, five dollar bill in your wallet with a couple ones, go to a place like Rite Aid, go to a place like Walgreens, go to a place like Big Lots uh, that I've seen organic cotton balls. This is what you want. So go grab this real quick. Uh, either out of your medicine cabinet or go to the store and come back to this video or just watch it but uh, organic and then way down the road when you can afford to do so again this is entry level you're gonna find q-tips the entry level person the person on day one today is going to do something no education hasn't talked to anybody doesn't know a damn thing about vaping this is for you you're me over five months ago. Q-tips? Uh-uh. Organic. And eventually down the road you will get stuff like the Japanese organic RBA, RDA squares. Almost industry standard, pretty much preferred. It's the best. But that's eventually, but that's going to be a whole video way down the road for you guys. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of shut up. We're going to go desk level. And uh, I'm going to give you uh, a little demonstration of the grocery list or the supply list that is going to be needed. And I'll describe what, uh, what is down here. And uh, we'll go from there. So see you at desk level. Alrighty, we're at desk level. Uh, this is where I'm going to be giving you your little grocery list, supply list, if, for what's needed if you so choose today for your very first time to rebuild a stock hanger coil that you've been vaping on, now they're all spent, frustrated, don't have enough to uh, buy a new five pack, uh, which I think the prices for those are outlandish to begin with. So here is your grocery list on what you're going to need. Of course you're going to need Q-tips, of course you're going to need your tank. Today's tank of choice is the V-Pro City Pro Tank 2 clone. And again, I give links to everything described in my videos down below in the video description. So you can go down there and pretty much this list might be down there as well for you. So the V-Pro City Pro Tank 2 clone, you're going to need its deck. You're going to need a spent Kanger coil. You're going to need 30 gauge Kenthal wire, coil wire, wire specifically meant so this might be the wire, your first initial startup cost. It could be the most priciest to begin with. You might have to wait if you order it online uh, several days to several weeks, especially if you order from Chinese companies that are notorious for two, three, four week wait times. Might have to go to your local brick and mortar, that's called a vape shop, buy one spool of 30 gauge Kenthal AWG Kenthal A1 round resistance wire that's what you want stock Kanger heads come at 32 gauge and they build them to uh, nano coil technology we're going to use the 30 gauge and we're going to build one to micro coil way different Micro is better than the nano coil. But uh, go to your brick and mortar, buy some 30 gauge, buy a spool of it. It's going to be your most pricey out of the gate as far as your startup costs. But the benefits will far outweigh the financials down the road. So we have the Kenthal, the cotton, a pair of scissors. I use a 1.66. Uh, 1.6 millimeter micro screwdriver from a micro screwdriver kit. You can go out into your garage. You might have a micro screwdriver kit. You might have one in your desk drawer. Your kitchen's junk drawer might have one. But uh, you want a 1.6 
millimeter. That's what I use. Cuticle scissors. That's for uh, nipping and tucking on the wick. A pair of fingernail clippers. A pair of 99 cent store tweezers. And then every garage, junk drawer, desk drawer, you know, especially has some, every house has got to have one or two little, you know, uh, needle nose pliers right here. I have one that's kind of like an L shape here, and I got one that's straight. So this is the list of what you're going to need. Cotton, wire, the deck, a tank, Q-tips, spent coil, 1.6 millimeter screwdriver, scissors, cuticle scissors, uh, fingernail clippers, tweezer, and a couple uh, little tiny little needle nose pliers right down there. So that's what you're going to need. Going to make an adjustment on the camera and then we will go to work on building. Alrighty, we are back. I made the camera adjustment so I can kind of do some work right here, bring stuff in for you, whatnots. Let's get busy. I already gave you the laundry list, the grocery list, the supply list. Told you what cottons to use, what not to use. Again, the video is primarily for the entry level person sitting there at the table, frustrated, don't know what to do with the spent coils. Well, hopefully this will get you started. Hopefully this will get your motor running and hopefully this will give you somewhere to go. So here we go. I've already got a pre-cut piece of Camthal. What you do is you just get it off here, unspool, fingernail clip, boom. You can get the size that you want. I roughly, when I'm building and I pre-clip a wire, I usually start out with either a five, five and a half, but no more greater than six inch uh, little slice right here. Uh, again, no more than six inches. Again, there's a lot of wire on these spools, but you will learn way down the road and as time goes on, every inch of coil wire, regardless if you're doing RBA, RDA, Kanger rebuilds for like pro tanks, wherever you're at in the build world, you learn wire is your savior and do not waste it. So what I'm going to do right now is I have a dirty coil right here. Been vaping on this one for about two weeks. Yes, with rebuilds, with the slightly thicker coil, beefier coil, and with the organic cotton, you can get just about two weeks of vaping on a single coil versus 32 gauge Kanger nano coil built with silica, a man-made material similar to almost like uh, liquefied movable fiberglass. Yeah, you can almost get about two weeks. So this one's had about two weeks to be vaped on. I vaped uh, Mount Baker Vapors uh, uh, Bavarian cream through this one close to two weeks and it's really not all that gunk I mean you can see on the outers the dimplets there there's the dark spots and that's what you want to look for you know once it gets a little darky a little syrupy color it doesn't look like it's gonna flow right that's when you kinda wanna do it so what I do is I take my flathead or any which one that you have you're not gonna have everything I do and I'm not gonna have everything you do so I take it and I grip it right there at the bottom. Right there at the bottom. And then I proceed to take the others and just do very minor twists and boop. You now have your coil split off in two. So what I do is I just kind of do a drop. And then I take the chimney part. Right here, the chimney part. And I just inchworm this little rubber seal that's just designed to be used while the tanks in action it doesn't need it when it's broken into its parts so I take that and I'll put that off to the side and then I take this and you're gonna notice right here I confuse this and I posted it on my social media and I was asking you know do I take a screwdriver because it's kinda leaking and do I t tighten it up no <laughs> a lot of people laughed back at me saying that's no screw buddy that is a bottom pin or plug to the coil and that's where the electricity gets fed into sometimes too so what you would do is you would take that out let it drop and there it is it came out right there that little doodad and then what you're going to see is you're going to see your rubber insulator your plasticized rubberized insulator right there that's what you're kind of gunning for 
And what I do is I just take my finger, fingernail, if I can, I get under it, and I kind of lift right here. And ta-da! I can actually, with a silica, it's a little harder to pull it through the insulator without damaging the insulator or stretching it out because silica is a little bit more beefy. But with the organic cotton, I can just pull it all the way through. No reservations, hesitations. It goes right in slick. So I take the, and this coil isn't all that bad. You know, I'll pull the, the wicking material out. You know, this is not all that bad. It still has a little shine to it has a little luster to it but this coil right here this micro coil right here built at 1.6 mm 30 gauge kenthal uh, one lead in plus six has been baked on close to two weeks and it doesn't look all that bad I've never had a burnt hit with any of my rebuilds that I do you kinda get the sense or you start learning that when the flavor becomes a little muted or if you're having to suck a little extra hard that might be the time to rebuild a coil or if you've re rebuilt you know like I do I do like 14 15 at a time so I always have a good supply that's when you want to do it uh, when the flavor gets muted you're pulling a little hard through the, the drip tip to, to get vapor and it feels it's getting a little gunked up, a little plugged up. Normally, that's just the wicking material. It has nothing to do with the coil, but we do both at the same time. So what you do is, again, you got the rubber seal off, you got the insulator off, you got the bottom uh, plug for the coil off, and then what I do is I will take what I like to call the fire chamber or, you know, the the, the reservoir here and I'll just take a q-tip twist 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 and that's about the level of gunk that you're going to come out again this is the Bavarian cream it's kind of a mildly dark tan made by Mount Baker vapor and so then I'll take the other and I'll finish it off okay that one's clean I'll turn it upside down do right there a little bit came off there and so now I'll grab another one and then I'll grab the chimney and just clean inside the chimney right there just give it a nice little clean job right there and again you notice gunk coming out and then to finish it off I take the other end and I clean there nothing really came off so we're good so both components primary components that you're going to be building with are now clean next what you're going to want to do is prep your cotton you, we don't go for the coil right now. You want to prep cotton. You want to get all this out of the way. So we will take part of my Japanese certified organic cotton square, which I've been using and it's been whittling down. I will take a pair of scissors and make a cut right down. Nothing too fancy, nothing too big. You don't want huge because, again, we're dealing with micro technology. You know, we don't want anything huge. I mean, we're not building coils to the size that would fit on a Mack truck. Say, so I take that, which again, in this state, it's still pretty big. So what I will do is I will go one further, kind of a touche, and I actually will get the center of it, that little strip, and start making a cut straight down the center. Straight down the center. Finish it off, snip, boom. I just got myself a piece of cotton that will work, that is doable. And I will snip a little there, clean it off at the end, okay? That's good to go, right there. And then what I will do is take my screwdriver, and then we're going to build the coil right now. I will take about a half inch, place my thumb on the uh, screwdriver on the base, pull in the, the, the coil out taunt. I'll make a little L shape at the end, make sure it's taunt, and then what I will do is I always build outward. I always build, okay, there's my lead in, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, and there's six. And once that's done, I pull this out 
taunt, just kind of yank it a little bit. And then what I do is I immediately pinch and slam it. Okay, I am now pinching the coil that's in between the base of the screwdriver and my finger. I am now pinching it. And I normally like to hold it there for roughly about 10 seconds or so because now you're making the coil more available to fit in the fire chamber of the coil head. So I usually just hold it there, give it a couple more seconds. And I think that's about right. And then I kind of just, before I release, I kind of do a little spin on it, kind of up and down the pressure just a little bit. Nothing too fancy. No high theatrical production going on here. Just a little, you know. And then I release, and boom, right there on the screwdriver, if the damn camera will focus, we have ourselves a coil. And then what I will do is I will put it more out towards the center, pull that in, and to make it more pleasant to deal with, I will then grab my fingernail, and then what I do is I usually about two inches away, I'll give it a cut, put the spare piece off to the side, and I usually keep my spares. You know, if it's still big enough to use, I'll build with it. And then what I do is I take my other needle noses, kind of right there, I'll pull, and then I'll pull to get these two parts perpendicular and these two parts as straight as I can. And then you just give it a little pull, pull, right there. And we're just about done here. Okay. We are just about done right there. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for these two legs right here to kind of be, uh, you know, in the same ballpark with each other. So to keep it on the screwdriver, put that down for a minute, and then what you're going to take is you're going to take your, as I like to call it, the, the firing chamber. It's just coil head. You know, what you're going to do is you're going to take the legs and you're going to stick them on in there. You're going to stick these legs in there. Going to get them down to the point that your screwdriver now fits within these two side slots right there perfectly I got good placement this is the trick you turn it upside down put it down right about there ta-da and then you make a little space and then what I do is of course sometimes uh, I do this on a hard surface this is kinda of padded today I will take one of these legs and stretch it out just a little bit make sure the legs are stretched out from each other do not have them touching do not have them in close proximity of each other because of electricity purposes. You don't want these things arcing pretty damn close while you're vaping. Then what I will do is I will take the insulator, find one of the legs, bingo, it's on there. And then either by way of tweezer or fingernail, I'll always try fingernail first because it's the quickest. If not, then what I do is I'll take that and just kind of put it in there the little pressure just trying to get it in there try not to take too long for you guys out there too because I don't want to bore you guys to tears but there we go she's just about in there all the way and there we go we now have separation we have one leg coming out through the hole we have one leg that now has been braced against the outer rim of the insulator and the outer well of the actual threaded part of the coil head down here. So now we have separation. I flatten the top part coming through the center hole. You take your plug, this little piece right here, and you put it right down in the center. Bingo. Right down there in the center now it's braced now you can move this coil head around with a little bit more greater of ease a little good peace of mind knowing that your build now as it's going has less and less percentage of being destroyed by whatever and then what I do is I will take my coil look at it and then 
I see that I have real good placement, almost dead center inside that coil. I will now take the screwdriver out. And we have pretty darn good placement in there if I can get my camera to focus. I might need to buy a new camera. No. So right now, you're going to have to take my word for it. we got pretty good placement in there. And then what I do is I take the fingernail clippers and clip as close, boom, as I can. And then what I do is after the cut, I'll put my finger across it. If I can still feel, you know, that, that, that prickly, you know, pointy metal from the clip, I'll reclip it again if I can find it. If not, like this is like baby's bottom. That's nice and smooth. That's going to work real good. And then I'll do the other one. Nice and tight. Nice close proximity right there. I'll feel. Don't feel anything really. Maybe a little. So we'll go back there and bink. There it goes. Baby's bottom on that side. The importance of clipping so close and so good is when you put this into a deck to build with it, uh, you're going to want it to screw down nice and even. Because if it gets too caught up on the threads of your tank, uh, it has the possibility of moving the coil inside the fire chamber. Don't want that. So now, with that being said and done, I will take my head right here, and I will just put that right in there ever so slightly just to give me a little work surface so that this is like up in the air I will take now and I'll actually whittle this down a little bit I will take this and what I do is I take one end and just kind of boom, 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 boom get it into a fine point fine point and then what I will do is I will take that to the best of my ability and my limited eyesight and I will and it's not kinda working right now and I'm not gonna pause the video we're gonna it's important to show you you know things that could frustrate you and you might have to deal with but it's also important to show you how to supersede it there it goes it just went through now this is where your tweezers come into play you take that angle bring it right here grab it pull it through bingo it just pulled through pulled a little taunt a little bit it didn't move the coil at all which is good and now I'm going to just do a little fluff right there we are fluffed and now I will take a piece you'll see very different options here I will cut the remaining right in half I will take this I will whittle it down a little bit and I will lay it right on top of the coil that's called a flavor wick then you take your chimney piece put it right on there bingo and then what you do is you push or if you have pliers you can bingo twist pinch twist pinch and a twist and your last one pinch now it should be on there nice and solid now this is where the q-tip or the cuticle scissors come into play real nicely real close give it a nice little cut what that didn't do I'll actually just do it with a real pair of scissors bingo bingo fluff those up put the rubber seal cap back on pinch down and now you have yourself a rebuilt Kanger coil head which will fit in a Pro Tank 3 Mini, original Kanger Pro Tank 2, and all the different variational clones out there of said devices. And it's okay to have a little bit of the material protruding like I do right here. 
you want those out a little bit that helps catch the juice and bring it in so uh, I'm gonna bring this above the shoulders I'm gonna bring this off the deck we're gonna go FaceTime with this and uh, I will see you in a second okay we're back up FaceTime above the shoulders time as I like to call it uh, now we've done the build gave you the grocery list of what you need gave you the advisory hypogenic to organic always use organic but uh, now other than all that now it's kind of getting time to the moment of truth um, for the new person that this video was geared for you are not going to have the supplies like the novice intermediate seasoned veteran builders do you are not going to have things or you shouldn't have but if you do you're lucking out things like an EFEST ohms reader and it will also read the uh, the volts of any like mod that you have and basically if you don't have one of those but you have something like an iTaste BB 2.0 that device has a built-in ohms meter if you have something like a VAMO V5 here my VAMO V5 stainless it has a built-in ohms meter if your device or for your mod, if your vape device has an internalized ohms monitor or ohms meter, that's all that you're going to have to go by. And this is why I call it the moment of truth. With an ohms reader like the EFS, I have a dual layer redundancy. I have two layers of safety. Here, you have one layer of safety, but also more important, one shot. <laughs> you got one shot at making that work. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if our coil can be used on this device. And if you did, the one lead-in which didn't count plus six reps, as you saw me count, if you build it there, we should be roughly between 1.4, 1.5, and maybe 1.6 ohms. And you're going to have to look up the specs of your device you're gonna have to try to maybe make some adjustments to what your device can handle and what you can build into but uh, the VAMO V5 can fire down to 1.2 fire up to 4.2 so if I can build any coil within 1.2 and 4.2 it's easy street steal a Vic Road of vaping and Oz is just around the corner vaping like a mad fiend so moment of truth time gonna put my device down we're gonna finish this going to take the coil that we just built right here we're going to take the deck of the pro tank too and this is one reason why it was so important to clip real close with the fingernail clippers the uh, the legs that were protruding nice glide it's butter it's great now it's on there don't over cock no wrenching but right there now it's there it's nice it's solid it's making good contact and it went in like butter because we took the time to clip those legs real close to the exterior of the threads that it would be going into. Now, I, before I put it on a tank, before I juice it up, before I even try to vape, this is our one layer of redundancy here. This is our one shot. Take it right there, take it by the chimney initially, then drop down as if you're going to feed this to the deck whittle it on there I know this is strange you're used to seeing a tank atop your device now whatever button controls your ohms meter mine's this one on a VAMO V5 uh, an iTaste VV2 uh, turn the device towards you in the lower left corner there's going to be a micro button push it for about three seconds it'll give you the same end result so here we go moment of truth What do we got there? What do we got? What do we got? 1.5 ohms. Butter. Absolute butter. That's the sweet spot. That's my sweet spot. I love building at 1.5. Uh, I used to build at 1.2, 1.3. Too hot. A friend of mine recommended, no, 1.8, 2.2. Uh uh. Took too long for the coil to ramp up with heat and give me the nick I want. I'm, I'm, give it to me. But this is an awesome combination of plenty of coil space, plenty.
plenty of coil surface, plenty of ohms power, and plenty of vapor delivery. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to take this, now that it meets our kitty cat seal of approval right there. Yeehaw! So we're going to take that off. And then what I'm going to do here is I have a cleaned Pro Tank 2 for you. And I am going to use the Mount Baker Vapor right here, the Belgian cream. Going to load it up with what was in there. Undo the cap. Arc it at an angle. Make sure you arc it at an angle. But there again, you've probably done this once or twice, especially the entry level person. So I won't do a product review on, on how to load a tank. And uh, my cat's like looking at me going, hey, cat, let's wait. So I'm going to fill it. I got it up there. It's nice. It's right where it needs to be. Not too high. And then what I do is I take a Q tip after dropping just kind of whittle it around make sure you get the juices out of the thread and then what I do is I put the cap everything just as it came off the Vamo put it straight down start tightening just start tightening it and we're almost there boom we have ourselves a rebuilt to 1.5 ohm Kanger head that once upon a time was bought in a store, but now we handle our own business and save the money. And uh, build them anytime we want, build on need, supply on demand. But through powers of technology, I'm not going to waste your time by allowing this to wick up for 10 minutes and kind of you know, playing Jeopardy music for you. So I'm going to pause the video real quick. I'm going to set the timer. We're going to wick this bad boy up. 10 minutes. I'll be right back. And uh, do a couple vapes for you, and then we'll wrap this bad boy up. Be right back. And we are back, and through, you know, modern technology, you got warp speed 10, 12 minutes ahead. Me, I got stuck in real time, had to wait it out. But got some things done, but we're back. We have our rebuilt hanger coil mounted onto the V Pro City Pro Take 2 clone. It's had 10 to 12 minutes to wick up, which you didn't have to wait for, I did. And uh, now, you take your, your device, something similar to a VAMO V5, VAMO V6, iTaste VV 2.0, whatever entry level mod that you're starting out with, that's kind of a little bit you know, better than the, the fakey fakey, the, the blue system or Sigalite system. Um, you should be rotated. I mean, if you're buying Kanger coils already and now you have that spent five pack, which now you can do something about, but at, t at one time you had a spent five pack burnt dry coils. And if you're buying coils, that means you have a tank like this. And if you have a tank like this, you're going to have like an entry level device like the Vamo V5 iTaste VV 2.0, uh, Ego Twist. Uh, Segeli SW20, uh, that kind of a thing. You're going to have this. So here's the moment of truth. Here's where it all comes together. And uh, if we get paid, and paid is the vapor. So we will mount this one more time. Tank it all now, not just deck in a coil. It's been juiced 10, 12 minutes. And then what I like to do whenever I replace a tank device atop this mod or any of my mods and especially if they have built-in ohms meeting meter I will push it one more time just to make sure that we have the 1.5 ohms you've just given yourself a virtual layer of dual redundancy as far as safety you did it atop the VAMO because new people who are going to watch this video probably don't have an ohms meter. That's your first level of redundancy safety. The device itself is at second level. But uh, you just kind of virtually gave yourself two layers of protection right there. So right there. Now, I will shut up. You're probably thinking, oh, it's about time. But uh, I didn't want to rush this video. And I'm not going to have any bones to pick about it. I'm not going to qualm about it. And I'm going to have no apologies about it either. 
I wanted the person that's going to watch this to have plenty of time with me. I wanted to hang out with you. Take the time, because I've seen some coil building videos out there that bum rush the process, cut a lot of corners, want to jip you out of the time of sitting down intimately with you and taking the time to explain. And then maybe a little backstory on the explanation so you can get a better gist of things. I'm not going to apologize for the length of this video. And to those that have a problem with it, have a good day. But uh, here we go. Let's see, it's payday. Look at that. Look at that. No gurgling. No limitations. Because with that flavor wick in the wick, we left plenty of air in that fire chamber inside the coil head. We left plenty of space in there for the air to get around, to grab the vapor, put it up the chimney, up the drip tip, and boom, it's into you. And at 1.5, again, that's my sweet spot of building. Uh, others say 1.8, 2.2. Not very good ramp up time for me. I'm pretty impatient. And uh, 1.2, 1.3, .2, too hot. Just too hot. 1.5. Remember, lead in plus six wraps, pinch, golden. Your butter. So uh, here we go. We're going to take one more off this. And again, running it at 1.5, this device, the Bamo V5, can fire down to three watts up to 15 watts. It is a variable volts device and a variable watts device. Always pick the watts side if you have that option. Always run your device in watts. The volts will take care of itself on a wattage automatic pilot thing. So with this being 1.5, I am choosing to fire this at, say, oh, 6 watts. I'll even pump it up to 6.5. You can do so. You can go pretty much all the way up to, you know, 7, 7.5, maybe at the maximum 8 watts. But I wouldn't go any further with that. A lot of people, you know, like Rip Tripper over two years ago made a similar video. He puts on one built to 1.5. You know, he puts it in his Pro Tank 1. He's vaping it at like 14, 15, 16 watts. Uh-uh. <laughs> Not advisable. Not very safe and you're not going to have very good longevity in your coil. You're not going to get close to the two weeks per coil I get with my rebuilds. You might get like two or three days, and with that, you might as well go to the store, buy more Kanger coils for $11.99 a five-pack, waste your money away. The way I'm showing you, longevity, flavor, vapor, pleasure. <laughs> Rip Shepard <Jeffrey> showed you. <laughs> Boom. Oh, second hit, it's a dry hit. Got to build another coil. So here we go. Again, 1.5. We're at 6.5 volts. Do one more for you. Nice. Nice vapor production. Again, a BAMO is not a uh, cloud competition mod. You're not going to win cloud comps with this damn thing. Right here. This is strictly a personal device for your little personal needs to make clouds for your little personal airspace and for your personally pleasurably vaping. Uh, it's just a personal thing, very all-encompassing, encompassing personal thing. So, mm. I'm actually liking that. It actually changes my voice a little on the exhale, which you know you're getting good vapor when it changes the uh, air going around to your uh, the voice box thing. But uh, we'll start wrapping this up. But uh, if you watch other videos out there, like Rip Trippers from over two years ago with the Pro Tank 1 building the actual nano coil, I built the micro, he built the nano. Uh, you might notice that I've circumvented a procedure where he just doesn't build it on the, the drill bit. He'll pull it off, take some ceramic tip tweezers, do a pinch, takes a butane torch, torches it for like 10 seconds, gets it red hot don't need to do that. When I was watching that and when I learned how to build and learned that procedure wasn't needed, I thought all Rip Tripper was doing was doing things for high theatrical production. A little bit of extra spin and spun to his videos. Ooh, don't need that. Uh, I also watched a video where a female was doing the same thing. 
where she took their 99 cent store tweezers coming off of a screwdriver, pinch, took a cigarette lighter, held it under there for about 10 seconds, didn't get it red molten hot, but got it glowing a little bit with the heat coming off the cigarette lighter, the open flame. Don't need to do that. If it looks good on the screwdriver, if it pinched good, if the legs pulled good, and it went taut due to the pressure, and if it visually looks good, 90% sure it's going to vape good. But on that note, might look like I circumvented some things. Yes, I did. A little, you know, maximizing the time, but it works as you see. So you can do the other ones, or you can maximize your time and kind of do it my way. And if my way becomes your way, you'll be building coils less time and be vaping quicker and sooner and getting your nicotine that you so choose and, and you want. So we'll wrap this up again. No apologies for the length of this video. I wanted this to be intimate. I wanted to take my time. I wanted to make you feel like I was there sitting with you, assisting you, putting one foot on your pathway, one foot on the path's journey to beginning to bust into the vaping build world. I hope this video was educational for you. Hope it was somewhat entertaining. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I monitor all my videos pretty much on a daily basis. I'll be more than happy to answer anything that you got. Uh, if you really like this, don't be afraid to subscribe. I'm always open to new subscribers. I like that kind of action. And uh, again, I hope you're having a good day or night whenever it is you're watching this. Video was for the entry level. No apologies for the length. Hope you got something out of it. Any questions, throw it in the comments. You like it? Subscribe. And uh, on that note, have a wonderful day. And vape healthy, vape safe, and vape on. Take them on easy. Bye-bye.